Um, there are plans, I know SWAG, I believe, is going to study the afatinib cetuximab combination frontline. Uh, yeah. Ross, any comments on that? So it's, it's, it's a randomized study comparing so patients with an EGFR mutation who are TKR naive who will receive a fatnib or a fatnib cetuximab in combination. Um, it's interesting, so Alice talked about the tolerability. If you looked in that initial phase one, two study, 20% of patients actually discontinued the therapy because of side effects. So one in five patients would rather have the disease than the treatment, which becomes challenging for a first line or study. Or a less toxic version yeah. of the treatment. But uh, so the, the potential toxicity may defeat the... Uh, um, I think it's gonna be outcome. tough and also there, there, it all depends on what happens with the third generation inhibitors, whether that will undercut that trial. So, Ross, can I ask you a question? Sure. So, so if you were to project, it, you know, I think you out there in the, the wild, wild west, you have those crystal balls that you, <laughs> you look into. If you were to project five years down the road, now that we have these third generation agents, are we look, are these gonna replace our first, second generation agents? Are we gonna use them sequentially? Uh, are, should we combine them? Uh, it, it probably doesn't a, make a lot of sense in combining them. Um, but the, yeah, you're right, one of the big questions is, you know, if you have an ace up your sleeve, you know, do you play it early and then have nothing left, you know, in the hope that you win the whole game? Or do you know, should you play what you have, you know, your, your second best card first and then come in with your ace? And things like that Tiger One study, that head to head, um, is going to be the start of how we try and answer that question. Mm -hmm. When we start to do those trials though, the solution isn't just, you know, is it a little bit better? you have to think the bigger picture, which is it has to be quite a lot better because right. the other one you could actually use sequentially. So it almost has to be like the sum of the so other two. So we're not two. talking about two month differences. No. We're looking for four, five, six, seven month differences. Yeah, almost, the almost like the sum, yeah. yeah. And then tolerability also has to come uh, in. And the Tiger One trial allow crossover? Uh, it will allow the option of crossover, crossover. yes. In the allotinib arm can cross over to the Clovis drug. And, and then another point I wanted to make, because I think it's an important point, uh, is to, to me, in these oncogenically defined populations, repeat biopsies at the time of progression uh, have become the standard of care, in my opinion. I think that message needs to get out because I see many, many people who come to me as a second opinion who have been with an EGFR mutation, have been treated with a year of verlotinib and then quickly transition to chemo. And then they come looking for other options without a second biopsy and all that kind of stuff. And I and we found it to be very guiding in terms yeah. of what you do next. So that mindset has to get out to the community that that this is now a new way to manage these patients is the evidence you get from a re-biopsy re specimen. And it's not just the genetic data that's important. Identifying T7NAM, of course, is important, exactly. but yeah. also making sure that they have their histology is preserved. Not and we have seen yeah. some, you yeah. know, about five to ten percent of our cases in EGFR resistance are have histologic transformation to small cell. Yeah. And that's really important to establish. And when that happens, you treat it as a standard small cell. We do. Well, we typically add, for example, a platinum atopicide regimen to the erlotinib. And keep the erlotinib that's going. And do you see typical small cell responses? Yep. Yeah. I've yet to see that, but I know you've uh, written extensively about it. Uh, ALK is the other major uh, biologically or uh, molecularly driven uh, uh, target. Uh, Chrysotinib was approved. Uh, I guess it's uh, almost three, three years, years ago. Yeah. Uh, really, based on phase one, early phase two uh, data, and you completed the uh, pivotal phase three trial in the second line setting comparing this agent to standard cytotoxics, to either Pemetrex or Docetaxel. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your experience sure. with that? Sure. So um, the second line trial was uh, called Profile 1007, and it was uh, involved um, about 350 ALK positive patients. Um, they all have, had advanced disease who were in the second line setting, so they had all failed one line of prior platinum-based chemotherapy, and they were randomized to either second line crizotinib or a standard second line agent like Pemetrexid or Docetaxel. And I think this study was um, really no surprise based on the single arm data that we already had from the phase one and two trials. Crizotinib was superior to either um, Pemetrexid or Docetaxel in terms of prolonging PFS. Median PFS was 7.7 .7 months um, versus three months with chemotherapy. And of course, having a significantly higher response rate as well, 65% versus about 20%. And there are no cytotoxic combinations that come close to that either. Uh, uh, to crisotinib in the ALK positive setting or to the TK, the EGFR TKIs in the uh, uh, mutant. Right. right, well, you know, I mean, now we have data um, mm -hmm. kind of moving ahead a little bit to the first line trial of crisotinib, and this is going to be reported at ASCO this year, but there has already been a release about this. And here now we finally have some data on um, 
a combination, platinum pemetrexid, in the ALK positive population. And this was very important because there was a lot of data, some of us came from Ross's group, showing that ALK patients are quite responsive to pemetrexid and possibly to a combination of pemetrexid and platinum. And so this is the first time you now have some data on so that. state-of-the-art comparator as opposed to a gem that's platinum right. or that's right. cat, uh, platinum. And what we'll hear is that it's quite, they actually have a pretty good response to carboplatin or cisplatin and pemetrexid, but not as good as, as chrysotin. I think the data have been released, so the response rate, I believe, was about 45% or 45 so. 45% versus 74 74. percent with chrysotin. And uh, the median PFS, though, with platinum pem, just up to six cycles, no maintenance, um, was uh, seven months. So even beyond the completion of the chemo that's right. and for the uh, chrysotin uh, was close to 11 months 11 months yes. so about three or four months that's uh, right better that's right in the first line setting there are a number of uh, second